Welcome to the Shulamite Podcast, an extension of Shulamite Ministries and Shulamite.com, with weekly interviews and teaching with author and speaker Martha Kilpatrick and hosted by John Enslow. This weekly podcast is a way to stay connected to the ministry. So come experience anointed messages, not giving just another method, but a living impartation. I was just going to say the marvelous gift of a child is they know they can't do anything. They don't try. Their whole life is one big receiving. A little child asks and asks and asks shamelessly. There's not a problem. I see the only problem is, is my adult. Wherever I think I'm sufficient, I am in big trouble. Deficit is not a problem. It's sufficiency that keeps me from the Lord keeps him from giving, keeps me from receiving. My sufficiency is my terrible pride and terrible block to him. A little child doesn't have that. So if we could learn this, that he would have everything, that his divine power has given us everything for life and godliness, there's, there's no limit except in our unbelief and in our old man. And then the way is obedience. And I illustrate this with a story that I love. I'm, I think this is marvelous. Very succinct explanation of the exchange life. A young Russian man was born again with, under major, major Ian Thomas Ministry in Britain. His growth was so amazing that he was pressured to tell his spiritual secret, but he always declined because it was too precious. Finally, he felt he could share. First, God called me, and his presence was so precious that I said to God at every call I would obey him. And I yielded and yielded and yielded until I realized that I was simply clothed with another power altogether. And I realized that God took me, tongue, thoughts, and everything. And I was not myself, but it was Christ working through me. Isn't that interesting that the very things we've been talking about, tongue, thoughts, and everything was what was conquered through his obedience, through his surrender, yielding and yielding and yielding. I love the word yield because it means you let him have the, the right of way. <laughs> you let him go first. Alternatively, yield is also what is asked when there's a fight. Do you yield? So if you're grappling with someone, if you're sparring with someone, if you're fighting with them, as I often fight with God over really? things that I, I know, wow. it's shocking. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing is, do you yield? Or as little kids say, say uncle. Wow. Which is, I give. Thanks. I give up. Thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> well, for me, it's, you know, it'd be nice if it was just simple surrender and yielding the way to God. But, and mostly it's my arms twisted behind my back. He's like, seriously, you done yet? Uncle, uncle. <laughs> <clears throat> so what are, what are we going through this for? What is the, what is the end result? What is, what is our, purpose on this lot in this life and on this world and at this time first peter 4 7 since we are approaching the end of all things be intentional purposeful and self-controlled so that you can be given to prayer our, our dear friend wanda wrote me that the word her word for the year was intentional and and I said, okay, I'm going to pray for you to be intentional. And then I got interested in that word. And then I ran across by accident this verse that in the Passion Translation says, and it's chilling. Listen, since we are approaching the end of all things, be intentional, purposeful. About what? And self-control so that you can be given to prayer. We are called. We can do nothing. We can be nothing. If we can achieve nothing, we can build nothing. We are called to pray. That is our work. That is our, not anything else, prayer. Prayer is getting God 
into this world, into this situation. And we have that power. John's always telling me, okay, go pray about that. <laughs> it's prayer that, that, that makes it happen. And that's so exciting. If we can understand that our work is prayer and that we have to be focused toward that end, praying to pray is the main thing. Um, what I say is that that your your greatest power is not in your words to convince or to whatever beg, beg encourage, you know, whatever chastise, what, whatever it is. Those that's not that's not where your greatest power is. Your greatest power is in your prayer. And I'm so grateful you say that, John, because I get it out of kilter. I'm so intent sometimes on being able to persuade and that's the sec that's not the greatest power mm -mm. This, it doesn't say here i actually you i could say yeah you you don't even need to do that don't even tell <laughs> just go go pray because i know when your your prayers are put forth i know that the father answers and it's dynamic it's a dynamic and it's answer easy. and it's easy oh it's so easy and it and it and it saves your soul and it saves your not life your and your involvement and my, because when yeah. you get entangled with trying to convince someone mm -hmm. in the flesh or in the soul, mm -hmm. you get slimed. And I, I think I tell this story in the tape of the month, but it's such an incredible story. I had a friend I love dearly. She's not in my life, but I have just such a love for her. And she asked me to pray for her daughter who had a severe legal problem, not criminal, but there was a severely legal problem and uh, an injustice. And I got a promise. I don't remember the promise. I could go look it up. Uh, just scripture. And I gave it to my friend. And, and uh, three years, some two or three years went by as the legal grinding of the, <laughs> the courts. She wrote me to say that Justice had been done fully for this gal, and she thanked me for all of us praying. And I wrote her back and said, you know, I want you to know two things. One is, I loved your daughter, sight unseen, unknown. God gave me love for her, and out of that love came the promise. And the promise, when the promise came, really all I did was stand, that, that it was done. There was no striving. Now, there is striving in prayer. There is real war and real striving, agony, weeping in prayer. But that was an, that was an example of praying the promise. And when you, when you get the promise, you simply stand, and that's not hard to do. You went back to five, which is love joined with faith. Yeah, you had that's love right. that joined with the faith that your prayers were going to be answered, and they were. Mm -hmm. And I told her that. I told her that story of sowing love and reaping faith. That's incredible. Isn't that incredible? It is incredible. Thank you, Jesus. It only took me 50 years to learn it. <laughs> so, okay, but there's an ultimate purpose. Number nine, the purpose of life is worship. Lord, teach me how you want me to live. Do this so that I'll depend on you, my faithful God. Give me a heart that doesn't want anything more than to worship you. Psalm 8611, and I don't know this translation, N-I-R-V. It's the New International Reader version. Oh, thank you. So, there it is. That's what we want to come to, that there's nothing to our lives but worship. Billy Graham said... How do you, they said, how do you spend your time? I just spend my time telling him how much I love him. Oh. <laughs> so there's our little, these things we're going to be on, and there'll be other scriptures that come. Everybody will have their own story of it. But we're going to be of one mind based on these steps that you're calling a ladder so brilliantly. And, and the steps of the shepherd, oh my goodness, he has to lead the sheep one step, literally three steps forward and four backward, right, John? It's hard to make sheep take steps. <laughs> it's not even one at the time. 
But that's a great analogy because it speaks of the patience that we have to have with ourselves and that he has with us. And that it's what he said to me one time, Martha, how, what do you, what, how do you eat? And I went, one spoon at a time. He said, okay. <laughs> Don't pour the whole story down people's throats and make them choke. Once you live one step at the time, one revelation at the time, one verse at the time. Don't give people more than they can take. And uh, so there we have it. Give me a heart that doesn't want anything more than to worship you. That would be quite a heart, wouldn't it? We hope you've enjoyed the Shulamite podcast. For all the latest from Shulamite Ministries, please visit us at shulamite.com where you'll find Martha's daily devotions, posts from getalongwithgod.com, and the online library of all of Martha's writings. At Shulamite.com, downloading the free Shulamite app is easy, and livingchristianbooks.com is only a click away. Thank you for joining us on this journey to discover a God worth knowing.